Hey guys, it's Miss Knowles here. Hope y'all are doing well. So today we're going to talk about sound effects. Now, sound effects are part of our technical theater lessons. So technical theater are all the things that happen backstage. These are things like costumes, makeups, prop, set, lighting design, sound, microphones, all that. So sound effects are part of sound. Now you can find sound effects anywhere. Obviously we have them in plays, you have them in TV shows, you have them in movies, you have them in toys and all sorts of other fun things. So we are going to be making some sound effects today. Specifically, we are going to focus on making a thunderstorm. So we're going to make a rain stick and then we're gonna talk about all the different ways you can layer sound to make an entire thunderstorm. So hope you guys have fun. Make your rain stick, which is going to end up looking something like this. You can decorate it if you want to, but it's going to make the noise of a rain. All you really need is you need a long tube of some sort. You can either get a paper towel roll, you can get two toilet paper rolls taped them together, you can get some construction paper and make it into a big round tube, whatever works for you. This is actually some wrapping paper because my daughter just had her birthday, so I ended up with a wrapping paper roll that I was empty with and I just cut it in half. So whatever you find that works, you're gonna need a long tube, you're going to need some aluminum foil. You're going to need something to pour into it. So I got popcorn seeds. You can use beads. You can use um, dried beans if you want to. You can use pennies. You can use little bits of crumpled um, tin foil also work well. So if you just want to crumble up some tin foil, if you don't have any popcorn seeds or something, that's fine as well. You can use little pebbles you find outside. Just really, you need something small that'll kind of rattle around inside your tube. You also need some construction paper, scissors and tape, and then you're going to need some different size sticks so that we can make our spirals. So I have the end of a broom and I have the end of a spoon. So just two sticks that are different sizes to make your spirals. It's really not as hard as it sounds, I promise. Now the big thing you wanna remember when you're making these is that your spirals have to be as long as your tube. So when you're measuring this, you wanna make sure you make it, you get it that's a little longer because once it spirals down, you need it to be very even. So make sure when you're getting it, it's going to spiral down. So you wanna cut your piece of aluminum paper a little bit longer than your actual tube. And then you're going to take your little paper and you're going to roll it and you can roll this your bigger spiral can be a little bit thicker in width, in width as well it does not it is not an exact science though so you're going to take it and you're going to fold it down to make a pretty long length like that then you're going to take your thicker broom pole or stick or whatever you're going to use, the end of a mop, the end of a broom, the end of a horse toy, whatever you have, take that and you're going to spiral it around. Try to leave, if you can see here, I'm leaving a little bit of space in the spiral so that the beads and stuff can escape a little bit as I'm spiraling it around. And spiral it around, make it really tight on there. And then make sure you check it so that it is about the same length as your Two. Now mine is a little, mine's about there, maybe a little short. I might try to pull it out some, just so it's as long as it can be. Then you're going to carefully take it off so that it holds that shape. That's gonna be very, very important. I'm gonna set that to the side. Then I'm going to take a smaller piece of aluminum paper, and this you're going to make into a much tighter spiral and a much tighter piece of aluminum foil. So you're line for this is going to be much, much thinner. So when you're done with that one, you can scrunch it all up. You can see that it's really thin. My other one was pretty thick. This one's going to be really thin. This one's going to go inside of the other one, so it's got to be pretty skinny. Then you're going to take your small stick, my spoon or whatever you have, and you're going to take it and you're going to wrap that one really tight around the spoon. Now you can always scoot it down some. You 
Get it really nice and pressed. Make sure everything's nice and tight. So it'll take like that and then it'll come off just like that. Then you're going to take the thin tube and stick it inside of the thicker tube. And they should be about the same length. You can kind of pull them a little bit to kind of make sure they're the same length. And you want to take a little bit of tape, not a lot, and just on one end tape the two ends together so they're not moving all over the place. Just like that. So not a lot because it needs to be able to wiggle a little bit in there because that's going to help give you the rain sound, but you want to tape it a little bit. Then you are going to make your marks on your, you're going to cut out two circles that are going to go around the edge. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to trace all around this side. And then I take it and I'm going to trace it all around here. I'm going to make a kind of larger circle around the outside and cut that out. So once you cut them out, you can see that the I cut a lot bigger than where my green line is the length of the tube, and then I cut out pretty far outside. They don't have to be perfectly shaped. They don't have to be the same size. You just need to give yourself a little bit of room to be able to tape onto the edges. So once you have that done, you're then going to take your scissors, and you're going to cut a couple lines down to your tube line. So this is going to make it just so it's easy to bend. So you can see I kind of cut, and these are all going to be able to fold up and make it a little bit easier when we tape it on. So I'm going to do it on the other side too. So you just cut. I would do probably about five or six cuts, nothing too precise. Like I said, just don't cut past the tube line because that's where you're going to go. So same thing, you're going to kind of cut it just like that, give yourself some tabs. Once you have that done, you're going to start assembling. Take your tube, set it on top of your construction paper at the bottom, and then start taping all of these little tabs up. Let's see if I can do it. So I'm taking it, take the tab up, and I'm going to go on the other side. Do the same thing. Then you just kind of start working your way around. And the tabs should help it to make it really easy to tape up. There we go. And the big thing is you want to make sure these are all up so that when we pour our beads or our popcorn seeds in there, nothing leaks out and gets on your parents' floor. So Make sure you tape everything pretty well. I would also kind of recommend going back and just maybe making a line of tape all, oops, all the way around the top so that nothing you're sure that nothing's going to get out and spill. So you do one end. Then you take your spirals that you have. Remember, you have your little spiral that's stuck inside your big spiral. And you're going to stick that down into the tube. And it should go from the bottom about to the top. So I don't think you can actually see in there. Maybe you can, but it's gonna, it hits kind of right about at the edge. So you wanna make sure it kind of goes right to about there. It's okay if there's a little bit of room, but don't have a ton. Then you're gonna take maybe an eighth of a cup to a fourth of a cup of beads, popcorn seeds, pebbles, rocks, anything you want that you think that is small that'll make some good noise. And you're going to carefully pour that into your stick. So you can already kind of start hearing that. Then you're going to take the top and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to just tape this up. Now, I know I have several of my art majors out there who are like, wow, this is a really cool stick, but kind of boring. I hear you. If you want to, you are free to decorate this, make it look as cool as you can for the purposes of theater as far as sound effects go. You don't necessarily have to decorate it, but it is a really cool little instrument thing that you're making. So if you want to decorate it, you can. 
Um, and I would love to see some pictures of your decorated ones if you do decide to decorate it, because I think they'd look really cool if they were decorated. And oh, my tape has stopped working on me all of a sudden. So you're gonna do that. You're gonna take it, and then when you move it, you can hear the sound of the rain going. And you just run it back and forth, and all that, and if you have to. It'll start sounding like rain. So once you get your rain six done, you want to start making, thinking of what other sounds add in to a thunderstorm. So we have rain six for the rain. If you wanted to do wind, you could do all sorts of things. Um, I know Miss Oxford in class has probably taught you the one where you put your hands together and kind of go, shh. That's perfectly fine. You can make sound effects with your body. That is perfectly fine. You can rub the hands together and go that. If you have some bottles or things like that, put a little bit of water in it and blow across the top. That's going to make a pretty cool wind sound effect. So you could have the wind starting. And then you could add your rain in. Um, you could also do things like for thunder. If you have any handy dandy Amazon boxes or other boxes that you have, you can always take your box and you could do a rumbling for the thunder. You could use your feet for the thunder. You could, I know several of my drummers out there, you have your drums, you could do the table for drum, for thunder, any of that stuff. Um, you also, if you have some extra aluminum foil, just a sheet of aluminum foil, clanging together, makes a cool sound effect. So what I want you to do today, after you've made your rain stick, go and start looking around your house. Test things out. See what kind of cool, groovy sounds you could make to add into a thunderstorm or a nature scene that might not necessarily be thought of for nature. So like I said, bottle of water could be wind. It's not necessarily found in nature, but it's a great way to make sound effects. So go around your house, practice, make some sound effects. Um, have your parents either take some pictures of some of the materials you used to make a sound effect or if they want to make a video of some of these sounds that you have so we can hear them. I miss you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, shoot me an email if you need anything and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.